adding drama to an image. In this video, it is a composite that we're going to do and we're going to use the AI sky replacement and a couple of other features as well to create the drama within the image. This actually started out with a joke between myself and my partner when I had said the other night that it looked as if there was a lightning storm coming. And I said it would be great to get back up to that tree and shoot it and hopefully we'd be very lucky and get that. But the lightning storm never happened, but she'd said, oh, you'll probably just do that in Luminar anyway. So I thought it'd actually be quite a good tutorial to show you. If you're seasoned in Luminar itself, this will be nothing new to you. But if you're quite new to Luminar, it'll let you see how some of the processes happen and some of the thought processes as well, because that's an important part of it. As you'll see the images I've taken and that I've used, the tree one with the, the field of barley, that's my own image. But the sky images are storm cells and lightning from America. And I got these images from Shutterstock because I use Shutterstock from some, for some of my other work as well. So these were the best kind of images to use and I thought they would work best with this. So the things that you've got to consider when using other images are, for example, the resolution has to be the same. It has to be the same resolution. But also you're looking for the size of image. So when you're scanning through whatever stock site you're going to use or whether you're downloading from other sites as well, you've got to look at the resolution and you've got to look at the size depending on what you're going to use. So the resolution of your own camera uh, and the resolution of these images, the size in pixels of the sky that you're going to use and also the size and pixels of the images that you, you're using from your own camera. So these actually play a big role in it because you don't want too pixely an image with a sky and it just ruins it. But all along, this is just for fun. This is not meant to uh, fool anyone into thinking that you've taken this image. This is for fun. This is a learning process and it's a good learning process. This I could have done in Photoshop. I could have completed it in Photoshop. But as I said in my previous video, Luminar is really, really quick at replacing the skies. And so I've used a couple of techniques and I've not just added one sky to this. If you watch the entire video, you'll see that there's actually two skies involved in doing this. So, without further ado, I'll show you the full edit from start to finish. Let's dive right in. Okay, now that that's us in Luminar again, the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to get in and add a new sky to this, just to add it drama. You've seen me use this image quite a few times, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to change it. So I'm going to load the custom sky. And the sky I am going to add is Edit 2. I'll bring that onto the screen to let you see it. The sky I'm going to add is Edit 2. Click Open, and that should drop straight in in place. Right, you can you notice here from Edit 2 we have some of the artifacts from the original sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the horizon position down. And I'm quite happy with that so far. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, what I'm going to do is, if you'll notice here, shot with two different cameras, and you can see there's wind when I took this photo originally, it's quite a bit of wind blowing, but you can see this has been shot with two different cameras. This is the image from Shutterstock. So we have to make this match within this. And so how I'm going to do that to get it to the best as it can be, is I am going to use the denoise facility. And with the denoise, I'm going to zoom back out because you'll notice that it is quite noisy here. So I'm going to push the luminosity denoise. And then I'm also going to push the colour denoise. Right, you won't see much of a difference here. But when I zoom in, you'll see that there's a big difference from that. So when you're using the denoise, don't think that when you see it and it looks quite pixely because it's been taken by a different camera and the image size is different aspect ratio or whatever don't think that you can't make it blend into the image so when you're using the denoise it's a good idea to zoom in and we can use the boost as well we can pull the boost back and you'll see that just clear up a little bit i can push the boost to let you see what happens so that is okay 
it is affecting the entire image though because we're on an adjustment layer so it has also affected down here and it's really softened the grass so I'm going to take the boost back to its default setting which is 25 I'm then going to zoom out and what I'm going to do because it is a, a rather large image what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the mask and I'm just going to paint in the areas that I need the denoise to affect so if I go brush paint and it's a hundred percent I am just going to paint through this and yes it will bleed onto the tree and it will bleed onto the grass but for the purposes of this video I won't go in too much and show you the detail of it and take out the detail just because of the time because what I'm trying to do with this is show you how you can affect your images and I'll just check the mask to see what I've painted you can see the areas I've missed and as you can see it bleeds onto the grass slightly up here what I can do is I can take this down and I can paint in and in the last video we talked we spoke about speed and speeding up the machine right, I can see roughly where that is so I know that I have to paint in here and have to paint in here so I'm going to turn the processing speed of this down slightly and turn the mask off so that when I paint now it is slightly faster and this is not a software issue, it's just the way the software works. And there is nothing wrong with it because you get the results you're after in the end. So I'm going to paint in here and then I'm just going to jump back in and check my mask. And for the purposes of the video, it won't be perfect. But if there's only a couple of areas left, I'll just leave the mask on to paint them. And I've done okay with that. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that just now for the purposes of this. So quite happy there and if I want to take any out there I can so I will. So I'm just going to paint out there slightly. As I say I've still got the mask on it's just to see where it's actually working from a tiny bit in here. Because you don't want too much disparity in your image you want it to blend together really nice. So I'm going to leave it at that for just now and I'm going to turn the mask off and I am going to turn edit mask off right I'm quite happy with that next thing I want to do is I want to I'm going to rasterize this future videos it'll be stamping but for now I'm going to rasterize so I am going to go up to that layer and I am going to rasterize the layer okay that's the, the layer rasterized and you can see already the difference that that has made you can see where I haven't went in and taken detail just for the purposes of this video and where I have used the denoise so you can see the differences there but for this I will leave it at that just now next thing I am going to do is I'm going to add a new image layer because we want to add more drama to this image so I'm going to add a new image layer and for this I'm going to use the image edit click open and that will drop the image on top of this so you can see from this image darker this side the light is coming from that side so we need to flip this because the light was coming from this side on the actual image itself so straight into layer transform and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it so that's it flipped and we have it there and now we have to take the light up to the horizon so we're looking around this area here we don't want too much in so we're looking around this area here but what I also want to do I want to extend it up the way so I'm going to drag that down and take it up because remember all we're doing is we're trying to add some drama into this and if I do that around around about there I'll take it off the screen slightly quite happy with that I'm quite done next thing I am going to do is I'm going to edit a mask and for this I'm going to use the gradient mask because I want to blend in but not entirely so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click there and drag that into around there just about just about there and I'm going to click edit mask again and then I'm going to get into the brush and I'm going to turn the opacity of this blend down I'm going to take the opacity down to around 26 I'll take the brush size up to about there, just a workable brush size 
and you'll notice I'm on paint and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to add a little more detail from that other sky back into this. I noticed that I haven't taken my time when it was blending and I've left a wee mistake in here so that's something you should watch as well and I'm just blending these through. You'll see some of it appearing and some of it not appearing. It just depends where I am. And the other thing as well that you have to be mindful of is it's not affecting the tree too much. If I turn the mask on, you'll see it's just getting to the top of the tree and no more. I'll just paint a wee bit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go erase and I'm going to take the brush size down. Then I'm going to turn the mask off and I know it just affected it in there, just slightly. So I'll do that. So that's me. So already we started with quite a bland image. But adding two skies, we've created quite a dramatic image. Uh, next, last but not least, I can actually crop this because as you can see I'm working within, and I'm working in a JPEG for speed of the computer. I'm actually working in Luminar. So what I can do is I can go in and crop this end out. And I could just do that. And click done. So there we have it. Image is ready. Last but not least, let's just affect the colour and add more drama to it. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And so for me to add more drama to this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into colour and play around with my blues. And so I'm going to pull the saturation back and I'm going to pull the luminance back. So we've still left blue in this, but not too much. The next thing, there's a slight colour in here. I'm going to push that saturation just a wee bit and push the luminance, not too much, but just to brighten that up. I'm going to go back into my blues though, and I am going to adjust the saturation of them. Tiny bit. So there, that helps connect this as well. Next thing, into my vignette. And I'm going to add a vignette to this. And I'm just going to watch and see what it does. So there again, we're causing drama within this. But I don't want the vignette as much here because there's a lot of light coming from this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my subject. And I'm the subject for this is going to be the tree. So what will happen is the vignette will move so there we have that. So we're adding more depth and drama again to this. Perhaps a little too much on the vignette there. So we'll just pull that back. Go back in and I am going to push the highlights a tiny bit more. Back into my colour. I'm going to play with the yellows here. Perhaps bring the saturation back but push the luminance of them. And for me, I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully that made sense and hopefully it lets you see the considerations I've made when putting that image together. As I say, it's a fun image to do and it's one of these, I really like that tree and I shoot it every time we go past because I want to see it in different light and different times. My one that I'm planning for it is shooting sunrise to sunset. There's a certain point in the year that I can capture the sunrise and the sunset and from the same location. So I'm waiting till that comes round. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any leaves in the tree when I do it, but that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed the process and in this case, my thought process and putting the image together within the luminar. And hopefully you managed to get something from it anyway. There's many sites you can get skies from and there's loads of different uh, downloads you can shoot your own you can go and get them and they're very very useful it's very useful to have a collection of skies as well so that is a good thing to have as a backup i'll actually put a link below to our photographer matt zeus who has over 300 skies i think for purchase so i'll put that link down below for you and you can go and look at his skies as well and there is lots of different things that you can do with the skies. You can blend them together. It's totally and utterly up to you what you do with them. You're not fooling anyone. You're not trying to fool anyone, I hope. You're just having fun with your images. So that's the main thing. 
If you don't enjoy what you're doing, what's the point of doing it? And I enjoy doing these. I'm not going to say to anyone, this is the photograph I took. I would love that for the photograph I took. With that sky behind it, actually a storm cell, but we don't get them over here. Uh, but, but it gives me inspiration. So hopefully that's how it works for you guys as well when you're out shooting. You think, well, if it had just been like this or if it had just been like that, yes, you can take the time to sit and wait. And luckily for me, that one's not even five miles away from me. So I can go to that whenever I think there is going to be a lightning storm and I can be safe where I am shooting from as well. So that's, that's a good thing. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out some more videos in the channel below, please feel free. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. As always, stay safe, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.